Hi, welcome to our time of devotion. I am Reverend Barbara McPhee, and I'm so glad that you are here today. Our call to worship comes this week from Revelation chapter 15, reading verses 3 and 4. Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Our scriptures from Nehemiah 13, 15 through 22. In those days, I saw people in Judah treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in grain and loading it on to donkeys together with wine and grapes and figs and all kinds of loads. And they were bringing all of this into Jerusalem on the Sabbath. Therefore, I warned them against selling food on that day. People from Tyre who lived in Jerusalem were bringing in fish and all kinds of merchandise and selling them in Jerusalem on the Sabbath to the people of Judah. I rebuked the nobles of Judah and said to them, what is this wicked thing you are doing desecrating the Sabbath day? Didn't your ancestors do the same thing so that our God brought all this calamity on us and on this city? Now you're stirring up more wrath against Israel by desecrating the Sabbath? When evening shadows fell on the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, I ordered the doors to be shut and not opened until the Sabbath was over. I stationed some of my own men at the gates so that no load could be brought in on the Sabbath day. Once or twice the merchants and sellers of all kinds of goods spent the night outside Jerusalem. But I warned them. I said, why do you spend the night by the wall? If you do this again, I will arrest you. From that time on, they no longer came on the Sabbath. Then I commanded the Levites to purify themselves and go and guard the gates in order to keep the Sabbath day holy. Remember me for this also, my God, and show mercy on me according to your great love. Nehemiah was concerned because of the disregard for the law. And so he did what the people could not do on their own, obey the Sabbath. Should we also keep the Sabbath? His regulations opposed upon Israel were what the New Testament calls shadows, pictures of something even more important that God wants observed. You observe the Sabbath when you fulfill what the Sabbath portrays. At the heart of the Sabbath is the word rest. In our society, we are so out of tune with that. We keep it up and people won't recognize what the word means. Yet the Sabbath is intended for us that we may learn to rest. When we think of rest, we can come up with some important reasons to do so. Rest prevents burnout. It allows time to recover from too much pressure that we put on ourselves to do all those have tos, have to do this, have to do that. Rest allows us time to catch up with ourselves, to pull ourselves together, to spend unhurried time with our family and friends, even our pets. But there are other reasons we are called to rest too. Two aspects of Sabbath rest that we find in the Bible. One has to do with creation and the other redemption. There is a rest of cessation, a ceasing from our own works. Exodus twenty eleven says, because God finished creation in six days and then rested on the seventh, we take from that the God asked his people to rest after six days of labor. We must recognize a limit to our work. We are to allow our bodies and minds and spirits to recognize their limitations. We are doing ourselves an injustice when we don't we make ourselves sick. This is how we were created. We were created to need rest. 
The second reason the Sabbath was given is noted in Deuteronomy 5, 15, when God said to Israel, Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. The people were to rest in order to reflect on God's ability to work beyond the labors they had already completed. To do so, we must trust. Sabbath rest is an act of trust. To observe it, we must dare to trust God to provide for our needs rather than working all out to provide for them ourselves. Isn't that what happened when they were led out of Egypt? Isn't that what God did? They had to learn to trust to dare to trust God to provide for their needs rather than doing it themselves. They couldn't do it themselves. This can be difficult, both for those who struggle with the prospect of not having enough and for those who struggle with the pearl of not recognizing what is enough. Learning to trust God for our provision is an ongoing challenge, particularly if we are prone to compulsive work habits. What a beautiful gift our God gives us in the Sabbath, a chance to rest, an opportunity to trust, an invitation to experience and rejoice in God's faithfulness. The Sabbath is a gift we should want to open every week. Our meditation today is in God, I find my rest. In God, I find my trust. Let us go now into time meditation, feet on the floor, hands on your lap, get comfortable, monitor your breathing. In God, I find my rest. In God, I find my trust. In God, I find my rest. In God, I find my trust. In God, I find my rest. In God, I find my trust. In God, I find my rest. In God, I find my trust. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for caring for us, for helping us to understand that we do have to learn how to trust, to give up a day, to not, it's not even giving up, to go into a day of rest, of worship, of relaxation, of healing, giving our time, time for our bodies to recuperate and to heal, to be nourished and refreshed, to give our minds time also to rest, to spend time leisurely, to spend time contemplating and thinking of you and praising you. Spend time with friends, with our pets. Thank you, God, because you teach us how we are to live. You don't expect us to just have trust within us. It's something, well, it's something that we learn, although when we're, and we learn it when we're, when we're born, we learn it with our parents, with our mothers who feed us. They're the first person that we learn trust from. 
We learn trust all through our life. When we can discern and we have understanding of you, Lord, we learn trust. We learn it in Sunday school classes, in Bible studies, in church. We learn it in our prayers, in our relationship with you. Thank you. God, we come to you praying for one another, for all of those who are on our prayer list, for all others that are in our hearts. We are grateful that Christy is doing better, recovering from her stroke. We pray, God, that she continues to better, to get better. We pray for all in hospital or care facilities, animal clinics, for all who are on the street or in their homes or in their nests or dens or lairs, healing. We pray your mercies upon all of us. We all need them. May we learn to love unconditionally, to forgive unconditionally, to see and to delight in the differences in one another, in the differences in creation. May we be helpful and kind. Any who have addictions, anger issues, who are called to leadership and don't know how to lead or forgotten how to lead properly, and not just leaders, all constituents, may we learn to build up rather than tear down, to work together. May we all learn to love May we all learn to share. May we all learn that it is better, it is better to give. It's better to give than to hoard. It is better to receive than to take. Help us to be kind and loving, to be the people you've created us. Help us to appreciate life. I pray for us. I pray for all of your creation. Help us to be kind and to be good stewards and caregivers to all that you entrust to us. Help us to care for our animals. Help us to care for the trees, for the water, for all of life, to be respectful. I pray this, God. And we pray now the prayer you've taught us to pray. Sing, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our thought For the week, sometimes I have loved the peacefulness of an ordinary Sunday. It is like standing in a newly planted garden after a warm rain. You can feel the silent and invisible life. Marilyn Robinson. And our benediction, may this day bring Sabbath rest to your heart and home. May the gravity of material things be lightened and the relativity of time slow down. May you know grace to embrace your own finite smallness in the arms of God's infinite greatness. May God's word feed you and spirit lead you into the week or as the week goes on in life to come. Amen. Sabbath rest. Some people hold to that on Sunday, others on Saturday. The truth is we can bring Sabbath rest into our lives whenever we want. That's a good thought. Have a good week. <laughs> Amen.